that we've seen a unfettered deregulation has done just to banking and to the housing marketplace. I would, you know, make some of those analogies to, I think, what has gone on, you know, in some creative areas. That's exactly where I want to go next. It's an issue that we've talked about a couple of times in Indian Insider Information here in Fame Games, and I've just read a study that was produced last week by the Future of Music Coalition, where they studied the agreement between the FCC and the country's largest radio conglomerates with the $12.5 million in fines that were paid, the U.S. Treasury for payola. But according to their study, like I said just last week, a year and a half on, payola and major labels are still ruling radio. Now this FCC policy that radio must allocate a certain number of hours every day to independent music. Do you think in Obama presidency, do you think we could bend his ear? You know, would he take the necessary measures required to enforce the, this FCC recommendation and really help change the playing field for small voices, the voices of the independent artist and or self-releasing artist? Well, I can't speak to any policy positions outside, you know, the administration. However, just knowing what I know about demands and the mission, this whole movement, which we reflect in this record, and the reason it's called Voice of the Grassroots Movement, it is really how his campaign was fought and uh, waged from the ground up that people led people to organize independently, small voices, and what the campaign was able to do is provide the vehicle for people to create the solutions on their own. And I think that that same approach toward problems like this, led by voices like yours and, and your organization, the administration, I think, would be very receptive you know, for any effort that comes from the people. That change, just like this campaign, has, or will really come from the bottom up. Your listeners will have a, a lot of power and can be recognized as such. Anything that they want to see change, and I think that's what's really been a result of this campaign. Again, you're listening to Steve McKeever. He's with us here on Fame Games. He's the CEO and founder of Hidden Beach Records, and they're putting out an album, a historic album. It's called Yes, We Can, Voices of a Grassroots Movement that we're talking about today. It's interesting that you mention how um, the power of those voices to come together because all of our indie artists have been making phone calls to radio stations across America and actually around the world because 20% of the artists submitting music to us do come from other places, Australia, Europe, um, Canada, and things like that. I've got a couple more questions for you. I hope you don't mind because it's such... Oh, no, I, I, we, we really appreciate you drawing attention to this project, which we work so hard on, as well as you know the general missions and things that you're shining a spotlight on, period. Now, whether it doesn't matter who people vote for because, of course, it's a personal choice, but I have heard, and luckily it was only one person, a um, friend of mine in the States who's in her 20s, says she's not going to vote. It's, nothing's going to change anyway. Do you think there's a lot of people that feel this way? Do you think we'll have a bigger voter turnout? I know we've seen a lot of cues for early voting, but um, I know that... Uh, you know, considering around the world we're the, the number one democracy in the world, our voter turnout hasn't been the greatest in the last couple of general elections. Do you think people yeah, are not even the last can't couple. affect that change? Yeah, I don't think it's the last couple. I think it's the trend that's been going on for quite some time that even spans generations. Guy who used to be on the board of Rock the Vote, who's a nonpartisan organization whose sole purpose really was to empower youth and, and to inform them of how mistaken I think your friend is. Um, I know, the, I chewed her butt. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> good for you. Cause, uh, but I, but I do, and I do, that's a little bit, I think everybody, the, the 2000 election, I think, was a should have been a wonderful wake-up call to see how much one vote could have changed, not just in Florida, but around the country. But I think the message here is, vote. Everybody's doing oh. it. <laughs> yeah, every, uh, across, across the board. And again, that's what, the voter registration with Rock the Voters about it is not about a partisan uh, message whatsoever, but you know, no matter what side of the fence you fall on or how you see things, I think it is really a you know obligation when you think about the type of blood that was lost for that right. Mm, absolutely. Um, 
Now we're really ta- we are talking about an album. Uh, pardon me for interrupting. We are talking about an album, however, that is benefit- benefiting, excuse me, the Obama campaign. And we're just going to imagine for a moment. Just imagine for a moment that Barack Obama and Joe Biden are elected. What would be your next compilation album? <laughs> Well, we, we, it's been suggested that we do an album called Yes, We Did. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, but we have, a, we have so much material that should be heard. So we're here talking about that. I think we are going to put some digital compilations up on our website at hiddenbeach.com probably right after the election because it has been again tremendous amount of music that should be heard that's really why we why i started this company was to provide a voice to artists and projects that didn't fit in neatly into any you know one box i've had people who were not fans or at least at the time um barack really more just not so much not fans but they were supporting another candidate they were lifelong republicans it had gotten quite moved by hearing the record and listening to it with an open mind that anyone who loves the country you know, or loves democracy or loves I think some of the real central ideals and one of those ideals that we all share a lot more in common than, than what separates us is one of the reasons I think this project has been so emotionally riveting for people and while I've got a ton of emails now talking about the amount of tears shed while listening I was moved at the very, very beginning of the interview as well as you described the project coming together. It's, it's, it reminds me of when we put Fame Games on wheels as well at that moment, knowing that you were doing something that was just, as you say, it was universal, it was good, it stood on principle. And that's also what I enjoyed about learning more about your record label, Hidden Beach Recordings, is that it was so refreshing to see your ideals of artistic freedom and expression crossing genres, creating new genres. Um, and that coming out as being a true independent really spoke to me. And I hope that all of our listeners, particularly the artists out there, will go check you out at hiddenbeachrecordings.com and um, learn more about you. And I'm also hoping that we'll get to know you a little bit better because uh, we've been getting tons of emails as well about putting compilation albums of our finalists, our winning artists here in Fame Game. And it would be nice to be able to partner up with somebody as uh, like yourself. Um, I don't know. I've been very interested in talking about that. I already want to hear Mark's song that you described. Um, be warned. It, it is so song. catchy and contagious. I, you'll not stop singing it in your head. <laughs> oh, great. Well, there's so much. I mean, I, you know, I started the company really based on... I worked at a uh, major labels. I worked at a major independent. In fact, the major independent was Motown, um, where when I was there, I was in the studios with some of the biggest artists and the biggest producers in the world. And as I went from studio to studio and worked with, whether it was at the time like a Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis or L.A. Reid and um, Babyface to Stevie Wonders to the sort of the monster artists and writers that I kept noticing that some of the most interesting and riveting music um, were things that they all had that were unreleased or Mm. did for their own amusement but some record company had said oh this will not fit in any box what we need you to do is to you know sort of try to replicate what is successful and so as I went around the industry in my travels, I saw the most amazing material. My favorite stuff was never released. So this was built here really to be that vehicle for that. And so, in fact, I really do invite anyone listening to join us at HiddenBeach.com. In fact, at the very, very beginning, I wrote something called What We Believe and with some of the participation of the, the real small crew we had of laying out what our ideals were as a company. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing now over the years how much there's been people from around the world um, that have found that little sort of manifesto, manifesto of what we want to do.